Welcome back to Uprising. I'm Sonali Kohatkar. In addition to listening to Uprising on KPFK and KPFA, you can now watch our program on Free Speech TV, Dish Network, Channel 9415, Direct TV Channel 348, and streaming live at freespeech.org at 3 p.m. Pacific Time, 6 p.m. Eastern, every weekday. You can also now watch our shows on our brand new YouTube channel at youtube.com slash uprising with Sonali. Check out that channel and subscribe. We need to reach 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. That's YouTube youtube.com slash uprising with Sonali. Let's turn now to our next story. Only 37 percent of eligible voters cast ballots in this year's midterm elections. While many simply didn't show up, hundreds of thousands of voters were impacted by various so-called voter ID laws, which either prevented them from voting or made it exceedingly difficult or expensive. The big question is how many of the races whose outcomes depended on small margins of victory may have had different results had such laws not been in effect. Or, as the Brennan Center for Justice put it, quote, how close did the margin of victory come to the likely margin of disenfranchisement? Last week, just before the election, we spoke with Vishal Agraharkar. He is the counsel in the Brennan Center for Justice's democracy program. He now returns to the show to give us an update on what played out. Welcome back to the show, Vishal. Hi, thank you for having me. So first, let's uh, talk about the handful of states where voter ID laws could have changed the political map. North Carolina has one of the strictest such laws where voters were required to give photo identification. Now, there's a man who actually helped put this strict law into place who was the person who beat Senator Kay Hagan in a uh, Senate race there. Is it possible his win may have happened because of this law that he backed? Well, yeah, I just want to make one correction. Actually, in North Carolina, while it did pass a voter ID law, uh, along with a number of other restrictions, the voter ID law was largely not in effect this election. So uh, this election, actually, there were a few different provisions of that law that were actually in effect. And so, for example, it cut a week of early voting, it eliminated same-day registration, and it banned uh, out-of-precinct voting. And, and each of those three restrictions did have a significant effect of election, but, but not so much voter ID, which uh, was really only, uh, there was only a soft rollout, and it will go fully in effect in 2016. Um, but with respect to the week in, of uh, the cutting a week of early voting, we saw, for example, that you know, in the 2010 midterm elections, there were 200,000 voters who cast ballots during the early voting days that have now been cut. And um, the, uh, the, the same day registration, uh, elimination there. And, you know, in 2012, there were 100,000 North Carolinians who used same-day registration, which wasn't available this year. And a third of them were African American. Uh, and, and you know, the third uh, restriction there was the ban on out-of-precinct voting. We saw a number of voters this election face confusion. We heard of reports of many people going to the wrong polling place and being sent somewhere else. And previously, those voters would have been able to vote in even if in the wrong precinct, but for the races, uh, for the votes that they were eligible for. But I should also add, you know, it's a little too early to tell what kind of impact any of these restrictions have had on the outcomes of the election. The data just isn't quite in yet, and it's not ever an easy calculation to make because so many factors go into voter turnout. But you know, it's certainly the case that each of these restrictions that were cut in North Carolina and elsewhere have been used in the past by significant numbers of people and were not available to them this year.